What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to learn how to create this really cool Instagram video effect for any of your videos and particularly your time lapses. So with that, let's get into it. Guys, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com, home to editing tutorials, camera gear reviews, tricks, and tips. Now, if you are new to this channel, I just wanted to let you know that I make new photo, video, and editing tutorials every single Wednesday. So if that's something you've been into, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date. Now, today we're gonna to be talking about this really cool effect that I like to use in my Instagram videos, particularly my time lapses. So enough talking about it, let's start creating it over in Premiere. All right guys, so once you're into Premiere, your window should look something like this. I've imported my time-lapse clip down here in the bottom and I'm using my editing panel. We can't just drag and drop our media into our timeline here because since we're wanting to post this onto Instagram, we have to have that four by five crop to make this the most ideal it can be. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to make very specific sequence settings for our Instagram video. So I'm gonna right click down in my media window, I'm gonna to go to new item, and up here to sequence, create a new sequence. I'm gonna go right away to my settings tab and I'm gonna change my frame size from 1080p to 1080 horizontal by 1350 vertical. Next, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that my frames per second is accurate with whatever I shot my time lapse or video at so in this case I'm just leaving mine the same and I'm gonna next go right down here to my sequence name and I'm just gonna call this IG time lapse and I'm gonna go ahead and click OK so before I even drag in my video onto my timeline I'm gonna create one more thing which is a color mat so I'm gonna right click once again and I'm gonna go down here to new item and down here to color mat all a color mat is just a solid color that pretty much can go over your sequence. It will automatically match up to the current settings of our sequence. All this is good. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to make sure that I select a white color so it blends in with the background of Instagram. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to call this color mat. That works for me. Now with that color mat, I'm going to click and drag it into my sequence and I'm going to just enlarge it to whatever works. So then I have a bunch of room that I can play with. I'm just gonna zoom in on my sequence and now we can bring in our time-lapse or whatever video footage we're wanting to use. So up here you'll see I have my Milky Way time-lapse. So I'm going to just select the areas that I want. I don't want that little black piece at the end. I'm gonna put an out marker there by pressing O on my keyboard. Now I'm just going to click and drag the video only down to here. And as you see, it is super zoomed in because this file here is a 4K file. This has 4K resolution, so it's going to be extremely zoomed in on a only 1080 by 1350 sequence here. We'll double click on our video that is sitting on our V2 track, and I'm gonna go up here to effects controls. Now you'll notice that we have all of these different controls here in motion. So the main one that we're gonna deal with is scale. Now, as you'll notice, I can change the scale to whatever I want. And then when I go to play this back, it will play my video back at whatever frame size I've just set. So I'm gonna first start way at the beginning of my video clip, and I'm going to rescale to a position that I want my video clip to start at. So this looks pretty good to me right here. And now I want this to zoom out so I can see my entire video, but I want it to be animated. So I want it to transition from this zoomed in to about here. So that's where keyframes come into play. So what we're gonna do is with your marker at the beginning of your video clip, we're gonna click this little stopwatch beside our scale, making sure that our initial starting point is where we want it to be. Now I'm going to go ahead a few frames something around here and I'm going to change my scale just by clicking and dragging over until my video clip sits snugly in my frame like this. So now as you see if I play it back it slowly zooms out and these white borders come into play. Now if you want to make this transition from zoomed in to out a little longer or shorter you can just click and drag this keyframe to wherever you want so I think I might want to make this a little shorter so I'm gonna just drag that keyframe in. I'm gonna play it back one more time. As you see now our zoom out is a little bit faster. Now there is one cool trick that you can do to make your transition from zooming in to zooming out a little bit more fluid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to click and drag, highlight both of my keyframes here. I'm gonna right click on the keyframe and I'm gonna go down here to ease in. 
Basically what that does is it makes the transition from moving to stopping a lot smoother. So if I play it back, you'll notice that it sort of has this nice feel as it gradually comes to a stop. It doesn't have this harsh stop, it just sort of slowly lands into place. So that looks perfect to me. So now this time lapse isn't really that long, so I kind of want to make it a bit more interesting. And I'm going to do that by duplicating this time lapse. I'm going to reverse it and I'm going to zoom in to my Milky Way and track with it across my sky. So what I'll do to duplicate this, I'm going to hold Alt, click on my video clip, drag it over, let go, and now I have a duplicate of my time lapse. I want to speed this up a little, so I'm going to go right click, go here to speed duration. I want this to be in reverse, so I'm going to click my reverse speed and I'm going to change my speed to 300%. So it'll be three times faster. And now you'll see that once I play this back, it will go to the end and then reverse back to the beginning. And in this case, since we duplicated our original video file, we have the keyframes that zoom in. So we want to get rid of those first of all. So I'm going to double click on that new piece of video. And now I'm going to delete my initial keyframe, which is the one that is most zoomed in. So now I just have one keyframe that I can click and drag over to the beginning of my video file. So now currently it's just going to stay at this size. Now I'm going to scrub ahead just a little bit and now I'm going to zoom in substantially. Now I'm also wanting to move this over so it zooms in more on the Milky Way over here. So now what we have to do is also keyframe our position. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of my clip. I'm going to click the stopwatch for my position. So my position here is now locked and confirmed. And I'm going to scrub ahead back to my other keyframe and now I'm going to adjust the position to better blend with where I want the audience to be looking. So right there it looks perfect for me. And now I'm going to scrub ahead a little more and as you see it just stays in that one spot. But I want to track with the Milky Way so I'm going to add another keyframe out this way and I'm going to just bring over my position like this. And I just brought that keyframe all the way to the end so it finishes with the end of my clip. Now this is looking great but the only issue is that when we go like this you'll notice the position moves over too far to the left and then we see a little bit of this white border here. But what we can do to get rid of that issue is just take our first position keyframe, drag it forward a bit so then now that move doesn't start until our video clip is zoomed in a little more and that solves the issue for us right there. So now as you see it zooms in and then it slowly tracks over with our Milky Way. Now I'm going to want to add the exact same ease in effect onto all of my position keyframes. So I'm going to click and drag to highlight all of my keyframes. I'm going to right click on the keyframe. We're going to go down here to temporal interpolation, two very large words. But basically just go to that and then go down here to ease in, problem solved. And now when we play this back, we got this nice smooth effect zooming in and then moving across with our Milky Way. Now that we have reversed our time lapse, I want to zoom back out and play the whole thing once again. So I'm just going to grab my video clip once again, drag and drop it into my sequence like so. And now I want to make sure that the beginning frame matches up with the final frame of my rewound time lapse here. So that sounds a little complicated, but if we just double click on that re rewound clip, go to effects controls, we can just go and click on motion, press command or control C to copy that, go back to our other video clip and press command or control V to paste it. And now it will actually have the exact same keyframes on there. But of course, I only want the last two ones, which are where it finally sits. So I'm going to command and click on all the keyframes that are not my last keyframes in my position and scale, press delete. And now I can just drag those to the beginning and we will have a perfect matchup. So as you see, it goes from rewinding and then it plays back the other direction. So with those keyframes set, we can now zoom out to a new position. So I'm gonna go right about here and I'm going to bring my scale back out like so. And then of course my position over to match. So as we see here, we have our initial time lapse, it zooms in, rewinds, sped up, and then it goes back out slowly at normal speed to show the full time lapse once again. Now at this point, you're pretty much good to go and you're ready to export your files. So to export your files, I'm just going to go to the end of my timeline here. I'm gonna press O for out. So now I've selected the ins and outs of what I want to export here. 
gonna make sure V2 is selected as well and I'm gonna go up here to file and down here to export and then media now the way I like to export is I keep my format at h264 now you can change your output name to whatever you want just double click that and then save it to whatever you want like that and then all the settings in here I actually do not touch for Instagram I find just Having these basic settings works just fine for me. And once you've done all that, you can just go ahead and click export. Once you've exported your video, you can just transfer it over to your phone and upload it to Instagram. And you will be amazed by the cool results that you will suddenly have with these funky borders coming in and out. And really adding this cool flair to your videos or time lapses. Now I know I didn't really talk about how to actually create a time lapse in this video, but if that's something that you'd like to see from me, let me know down in the comments below. With that, that is all I have for you for today. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all my photo, video, and editing tutorials uploaded every single Wednesday. And make sure to find me on Instagram, at burnwills. But enough about Instagram, you go on, enjoy your day, I'll catch you back here next Wednesday.